Very excited, all the exciting news. Wait, Tashween, did you get all of the paintings that you did framed and put up behind you? Um, I only did two. I added oh. my other stuff, but yes, I'm trying Wait, to. Wait, hold on. Let me spotlight her. Let's see. That's Add the spotlight. Funny. Oh yeah, good eye, Emma. The, the peacock is there, and the deer. Yeah, the deer. I'm trying. They're great. Do you just get a ready-made frame and pop it? That's what's kind of nice about that. Yeah, yeah, that looks wonderful. I love that because then you're looking at it all the time. You're seeing your work. You're able to look at it. You're able to keep looking at it. That's awesome. Okay, so we, uh, when we left, we had basically got our base layer of our trees in here and we're working on our barn. But what we didn't really have time to do is work on these grasses. So that's what we'll do now. Uh, my question to you is looking at the source and you guys should feel free to do, you know, take off and do what you wanna do with these paintings. If you feel this is a little dull, you can totally juice it up with other colors. But my question is, it, does anybody see a glaze we might try before we start working on the grasses? I'm looking myself. Maybe like a, a blue? A blue, I like the idea of a blue glaze. I agree, like we just wanna push these a little bit darker, right? So that we can lay down oranges on top and greens here. I think that's a great idea. So um, take the blue of your choice. I'm gonna do what I always do and go with ultramarine. And so that's ultramarine blue, but you can pick phthalo if you want. You can use whatever blue you want. Uh, my one inch brush. Oh, was I painting something with this? I thought I got new water. Um, and for the glaze, if you remember, so right, see how I'm kind of uh, getting lots of water on my brush. I'm dipping it kind of repeatedly. It's, it's actually dripping down on my leg right now. <laughs> the idea of the glaze is you can't really see. This is what I would call loading the brush, right? Where you can actually see the paint piled up on the brush, but that's not what I'm looking for on the glaze layer. I'm looking for something that looks more like this right? Watery. So that when I go over and I'm just going to go over, well, you know, heck, why not do the whole thing? Can't hurt. Right. And this is pretty dark. So you'll see as I do it, just like running a filter over your camera, you can kind of lose some of your light parts. So if there's light parts you want to... Ah, sorry. The one problem with the with the headphones is that their their thing isn't long enough. Um, I want to kind of bring out the lightness of the sky again, so I'm actually wiping off with the paper towel in some of the lighter areas, just to maintain, like here on the. But even adding it to the farm kind of how the farmhouse kind of helps a little bit. So yeah, go ahead and try a blue glaze. Definitely helps. And I love these little things that happen. I might totally cover this up, but I like having it there uh, just in case. And down here, particularly, you'll see in a lot of the paintings I do, I'll leave the, the drips to kind of cut the dark drips to kind of come down. In fact, I want more. So I'm going to get more in there the dark drips to come down. And I'm even in curtsy, yeah. Because I really feel that um, in my way, it sort of conveys grass very nicely. If I want to, I can take off the sort of bubbling water so go ahead and start with the glaze. If you decide you want to do a glaze in another color, that's totally fine too. So it looks like we've got two tones for this grass. Um, I definitely see burnt sienna in here. 
and maybe a little bit of cadmium. Don't worry, I'll write these down. You don't have to remember them. A little bit of cadmium red. And ochre. Yellow ochre. If you don't have these colors, don't worry about it. We'll find substitutes for ya. We definitely want some white. And for the greens, oh gosh, I'm gonna show you another technique for creating grass today, which I really like. So we've got these kind of grasses in the front, which we'll be paying more attention to. There's white. Um, I think we're gonna want Viridian green and yellow in here as well. Who here, Jean and I were talking about, just talking about pastel class. Who here is taking the pastel class with Marie on Sundays? Tashween is, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty great, isn't it? I was thinking that we get almost all of the colors that we want out of like 10 paint colors, <laughs> maybe 12. But uh, what's nice about pastels is the colors are already mixed for you. That's why you need so many, because like they're already mixed. So you can just kind of play with arranging them together. All right, so this is Viridian Green, Marie Green. Here's white. I have Ultramarine Blue. If you want to put phthalo blue, you can. I'm not really interested. I don't see it in this thing, but that doesn't mean you can't have it. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, cad red light, and cad yellow. I do not have ochre. Uh, what yellows do you have? Um, I have I have cadmium, yellow, medium, and deep. Okay, cad cad deep will probably help. What else do you have though? Just out of curiosity. Um, I have the annoying primary yellows and <laughs> um and like yeah, that's it. I have like a try bowl. cad deep. Try try cad yellow deep. It'll probably do similar things for you. Um. So I'm looking at kind of mixing two sets of colors. There's this kind of or so sort of sort of burnt sienna orangey color back here. There's this lighter green, and then there's kind of a mauvey purple in here before we get up to these. So I'm going to start with trying to mix this back color. I'm going to start with my my yellow my yellow ochre, my yellow deep, and some burnt sienna. I wonder how just that would look. It's slightly dark. Now, I know if I add white, it's going to lighten it quite a bit and, and kind of flatten it. So, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I mean, here, check this out. So here is kind of a lighter white. It, it's okay, but it, you see how it turns kind of black? kind of flat. That's what white does when you mix those two colors together. So I'm going to make more of the base, which is burnt sienna and yellow ochre. I'm going to try a little bit of cad yellow, see what happens there. So cad yellow uh, medium, Emma, as opposed to cad yellow. Um, yeah, I, you know, I can't, I, you know, it's hard to get exactly what you what what we want here. I'll show you what these colors look like so you can see the differences. And I was wondering whether we should try painting with a palette knife, at least in the background, because I haven't really showed you how to do that. Here, hold on. So let me show you. I don't have exactly 
But I, if you have a color combination that's kind of close and pleasing to you, I would say go with that rather than directly what's happening here, which is a little bit gray and kind of dull. Um, yes, yeah, so you know what, we're gonna, so you have a choice to do this with a brush, but I'm gonna show you how to do this grass with a palette knife. There we go. And here are the two color combinations. All right, so when I send this over, this is, this is burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and then white over here. And this is burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and yellow over here. I'll probably use some combination of all of them and if you take your palette knife, clean it off, I'm gonna scoop up a little bit of each of the mixes so that it's not all blended together. It's a little bit tricky to see here. And then I'm going to lay it, I'm just gonna kind of brush it in. So what you should get is kind of a varied, varied texture some light areas, some dark areas. If I feel like I wanna go a little bit lighter. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go, in some areas. So see how I'm kind of, I'm laying it on the tip, I'm scraping it off on the tip like this. I'm pulling it using the tip and then I'm kind of pulling down, letting little bits of the green, the field beneath, the colors beneath come through. kind of fun. It's a totally different, very impressionist kind of mark making technique, but very textural and kind of yummy. And there's some here. There's here, here. So when you're taking both mixes, like where on the knife are they like overlapping? I'm just, I'm just, you can overlap them or you can actually scoop them up in different locations, right? Okay. Yeah, so experiment, I would say, with that. You can put them in different places. And I kind of like how that looks, it's pretty. I might, I might lighten it a little bit later. Let's see, I want it to be a little bit lighter. But the idea is to let some of this come through. So let me get a picture so that you can really see. So this is where the underpainting becomes really important. Here we go. It's interesting here. I'm gonna pull this down for a second. Of course, now this is showing as like too bright. What if I turn this off? I can never win. Okay, it's a little bit better. Here we go. If you remember, you know, we're pretty far back here, so we don't have to do a lot of detail back and if you wanted to of course you can go back in and work your a little bit of your farmhouse with your palette knife too from some of those top colors it might look really nice and while you guys are doing that i am going to mix the greens and the purple so we're going to start with viridian green now i know you we never use just green we always mix a little bit of red. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of cadmium red in with my green to make it a little bit more landscapey muted. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of cad yellow light to lighten it. Definitely got not gonna add white to my grass to lighten it, particularly for that kind of pretty, bright, warm green color. If I add white to my grass, you can try it. So here's 
uh, viridian grain, burnt sienna, right? And then a little bit of white. Look at what the white does. The white creates this kind of cool, flat, minty color. It's not very nice. This one is better. Just to show you the difference. Oh, Jean, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Jean, if I was you, I would start with, did we start with the sky on this one? I can't remember. You could do anything. You could start by laying in the sky in the tree. Okay. Uh, working around the farmhouse, or you could start with the actual farmhouse and try to get in some of this texture. These are, these are all, these are grays that are basically mixed with, um, oops, here, you can't see. These are grays that are mixed with um, blue and orange, some variation of blue, orange, and white. Mm -hmm. So you can start mixing those colors for your different, this is kind of a more mauvey color and slightly darker. This has got a little bit of burnt sienna and white in it. Um, you can start mixing grays for your farmhouse, either way. So you can start with the sky, then the trees, which is just viridian green and burnt sienna, mm -hmm. and then go to your farmhouse, uh, or you could start on the farmhouse first. Okay. Yeah. All right, and just to show you the difference between these greens. How are you, I feel like you guys are really starting to get your, your mojo going with, um, with, with uh, painting and color. Would you say that's true? I mean, considering what you did at the beginning, what you could do at the beginning of January, I really see, I feel a lot of, of improvement is happening. So I'm mixing this kind of yellowy green with a bit of red in it for the grass. And then I want a sort of mauvey purple. So I'm gonna start with, you know what? I might give myself another red. I might give myself, give myself some cool red, either alizarin crimson or quinacridone red, a little bit of that pinky red on the palette. We'll see. We'll see how it works. Maybe it's better to use cadmium red for this particular mix, but I'm going to give myself the option of trying that. So I'm going to mix a little bit of red, a little bit of blue to make a purple color. Ah, that's way too much red. And then I'm going to add yellow ochre to it and then lighten it a little bit with white. See what happens. See if I get, ooh, that's pretty. It's kind of a reddy blue because I had a lot of red in there. I could drift more blue in. Or I could try mixing cadmium red and ultramarine blue. So you have options here, I guess, is what I'm trying to tell you as we go through and we do our mixing. And please feel free, you guys, to ask me if you want me to repeat any, and I'm mixing, um, it's very different, it's interesting. I'm mixing uh, yellow ochre with that, and then white. So there, this is interesting. This makes a more gray color, and this makes a more purple color. Let me show you the difference. So I'm mixing kind of for the green grass here, and then this little field of kind of very mauvey purple flowers sticking out through the center of it. Or Jean, you know, you I was just thinking, you could also totally go with what we're doing here on the grass and then move to the cabin and the sky and the trees if you wanted to. That's another option. So it's, you know enough about painting to know where you want to start. You can do whatever you want, like in the process. Thank and you. Then, 
once again, yes. <laughs> of course, everybody is welcome to do whatever they want to tell me to sod off. And <laughs> we're going to do what you want. I'm gray right now. So. Right. Yeah. The grays are wonderful. And then I'm going to sort of lay in. Oh, that's nice. I feel like that's really pretty. So once again, I'm not overly mixing my colors so that there's a little bit of variation. See how easy it is to kind of lay your palette in in this, it's really fun. I'm gonna mix more. You're gonna need a lot of green and yellow. and red to kind of get enough in here. The red's really important when you're doing a landscape. All, and don't worry about having mixing everything exactly the same. As you know, like these grasses have, oh yeah, this is looking awesome. Listen to me, I'm all like, it's awesome. This is looking awesome. Sorry, could you say the color mixture for the green again? Uh, Viridian green, cadmium red, and cad yellow light, or cad yellow medium to lighten it. Cool, thank you. Yep. Um, I'm also noticing that some of my base texture is looking a little bit like these purple flowers. So I'm leaving an area kind of about here, a bit of space here and then dragging down. So I'm gonna leave a bit of space here open for that little purple field, but I want bits of green in it. And I also, it's the same here. I'm actually coming down here and dragging down with my green mix, but not completely, right? I'm letting other, this is where the underpainting, you're actually really showing a lot of the underpainting. It's not always true that we can really see the underpainting. It's more of a subtle thing. But in this type of painting, the underpainting, showing the underpainting is really helpful. So I'm doing that. And I'm kind of leaving this blink. And then I'm, I'm gonna pull in some of my purpley, oh, that's way too dark. All right, so let me get in some more lights. I know these purples are a little bit brighter. Your purple is gonna have a little bit of gold in it, a little bit of um, cadmium yellow deeper or, or yellow ochre. So you see how I'm also kind of laying in the, using the, um, I think we have done this before. Have we not done this before in our wildflower fields? Did we use a palette knife or did we, no, I guess we just used a brush. So this is a fun way to kind of create this very loose field. I can take some green and kind of brush it in over the top, right? So it's not so solidly a purple line. By the way, out of curiosity, who here wants to start working in oil? Who's interested in that? I could be interested. Excellent. That's what we'll be doing on Sundays. Um, you don't have to, you can totally stay with acrylic, right? While the rest of people go on to oil, but uh, I'd like to know who's like interested in actually trying it. I think that'd be kind of cool. I finally invested in some water-based oil. Okay, great. So you're ready to do it too. This is good. This is good. So I know it's a little bit, you can also come here and kind of pull down some of your orangey red color into your green a little bit. You can, so to soften that edge, or you can go back in with your brush, with a big brush, a big flat brush, a big flat brush, kind of a raggedy brush like this. If you don't like that edge and kind of create more, see softer marks, see how I can kind of come in here and create different marks. So I can kind of use a combo 
of the Oh yeah, this is looking very nice. My green is looking very like army green. Uh, probably too much red. Okay. Or you might, so put more yellow in and a little bit more green. Um, or you might try instead of cadmium red, you might try a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, which counts as a red also counts as an orange. So see how I'm kind of using my brush now too to sort of, and then there's these little dark, now I'm looking, I'm seeing these little dark green edges here. So I'm mixing some burnt sienna and viridian green. And I'm just coming in with my brush and adding in a couple of this sort of dark scruffy I don't know. I find this like such an optimum way to paint because it's so much less pressure than having to feel like you have to work every single, you know, draw every dang blade of grass. There, kind of in here. There's a little bit more happening here and a little bit in here. And a few, if you wanted to, you could add a few of the things on the hill here. You know, a few of the little bushes that are separate from these trees on the hill. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yes, and please send stuff over as you're working on it. Oh, that's beautiful, Emma. That's stunning. I love it. I even like it. I'm not really a fan of this muted color here. So I love the brightness of your painting. I feel it looks very vibrant and alive. And just to show you, yesterday's picture had a lot more of that going on, right? The one we did in West Coast. So feel free to jump, add this and keep it a little bit more vibrant. It's beautiful. Are you enjoying it? That looks like it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think this yeah. is my painting. This is your thing. Yeah, this is your jam, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very impressionist. And look at how your background is feeding into this as well, right? So be careful not to over mix too much. Leave those little variations of color in. Fun. Give me just a second, you guys. I'm gonna jump in. Hermes is having too good a time out in the catio. Let's see. How's everybody else liking this technique? 
Come on, stop. So, if I, so you can go back and forth with this combination of the brush. I'm feeling like my 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 top layers are a little too dark, so I'm mixing a lighter version with more yellow, less green and red. Yeah, uh, the khaki color is definitely the too much red, so you can mitigate that by adding in a little bit more green and yellow. So see how I'm kind of going in right over the top, letting some of that dark go through, but letting a kind of lighter layer. So that creates a variation. And I'm dragging it into my violet flower field just a little. I'm gonna leave this because I want this to dry because I wanna actually get back to these grasses here. What I like about the palette knife is it creates this very grassy texture. I don't know if anybody's digging else is digging it besides Emma, but I think it's really I think it's a lot of fun. And you can keep pushing this more and more abstract, right? That's kind of one of the fun things about this particular medium and tool, things can get very abstract. You can create something that feels like a field, which is just like fields of color like this. And then you can sell it for like thousands of dollars. <laughs> You'll be like, what, really? Okay. Landscapes, by the way, are the top selling painting in the US, along with, uh, along with um, turquoise paintings, <laughs> very, very popular turquoise paintings. I think I had my volume turned it on again. So if anybody said anything, I didn't hear it. Sorry. So I'll ask that a question again, only because I didn't hear the answer because I had my headphones turned on <laughs> low. Who is uh, finding this kind of a nice, who's enjoying this way of working? Or who's finding this maybe hard? Well, you're what all just. What's that? It's a, what a sad bunch. Yeah. Oh, no, they're just all into it. They're ignoring me. They've had too much Zoom. <laughs> this poor HR woman I just met with was like yawning on the phone. And I said, how many like Zoom meetings do you have in one day? And she was like, this was a light day. I had 15. <laughs> 15, can you believe that? It's insane. I believe it. Yeah, I bet you do. It's absurd. And Zoom meetings are really tiring. 
Like, I think they're more tiring than a regular meeting. Because you have to pay attention more. I don't know. There's a lot of information you're not picking up because you're not in person. Oh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. I like how that's working. So you can play around with your horizon line a little bit, add some layers to it. Notice I'm kind of shifting back and forth. I've got a palette knife in one hand and a brush in the other. And sometimes I'm liking the palette knife and sometimes I'm liking the brush. A lot of soft edges, a lot of blending happening. And then we're gonna go back to that mix that we did up here. here. Hold on, let me clean off my palette knife. Oh, I need more ochre. I'm just gonna put up another piece of palette paper. Dark. Oops. And uh, sorry, what was the the um the violet field that, that you were using, or like? The so it's it's a purple plus your yellow deep plus a little white. And I tried two different purples. I mixed a purple with uh, a cool red and blue. And then I mixed a purple with a cool red and a warm red, sorry, a blue and a warm red, right? So a cadmium red and, but the important thing is it's purple with a little bit of your yellow deep or your yellow ochre in it and white. Cause it's a very gray, you know, light, kind of heathery mix. So you don't want a totally vibrant purple. If I lay something like a basic purple with nothing in it, like but purple, here, I'll show you what that looks like. Just mixing quinacridone red, yellow and, nope, and a blue. Did you send a picture of what you have? Yeah, hold on. I haven't finished yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm showing you what not to do. So, right, as opposed to what you should do. So if I just mix like a purple and a blue and a white, I'm going to get something that looks like this. Actually, that's not that bad, but um, it needs a yellow in. It's too vibrant and kind of dark. It definitely needs a yellow in it. So this is just purple with white. So notice almost always I'm mixing the complements. So here's just the regular purple with white. Uh, sorry, I meant like a, a picture of the painting. Yes, here, hold on. Here we go. Thank you. There you go. So you can see it's a kind, these are not, they're pretty, but they're a little bit too bright, right? 
for the sort of faded back. So I want a little bit of yellow ochre or yellow medium in so that my purples push back a little bit. They're a little bit more subtle. Otherwise they jump out too much. Okay. And then the last bit is this kind of yellow. We go back to this yellow uh, ochre combo. A little bits of yellow. Here's more ochre. So I'm mixing burnt sienna. Bring it over here. Right, it's this kind of Bird Sienna, I might even put a little bit of purple into there. Oh, now that's nice. Ha. I'm taking a little bit of my purple mix and putting it into my Burnt Sienna and Ochre. It's making a beautiful thing. Now I can load my brush, like I can load by the side of my palette knife and I can do little, see grass streaks kind of folding over. They don't have to all like go the same direction. Some can be a little bit thicker. Some can be a little bit lighter. They don't actually, that looks really nice. Right, so um, you can use your palette knife to create these kind of upright grasses make them go all different directions, kind of different heights. You can rise a couple above high. See how, so that's a little bit like how we used the brush, the single bristle on the brush. And look at how nice that looks. You can kind of bring it up over your purples, cover them up a little bit. Let definitely let some of the green come through. And do some light, thicker streaks, all using my palette knife. Going all different directions. Yeah. Not too many of the thicker streaks. I think I got too many of those. I may have to go in and do a little bit more green. I'm thinning out some of those. I think it got a little too thick. So be careful, mostly to use the side. Also, it seems that like mostly, yeah, and mostly use this Pretty. And then you can kind of go back and work around your canvas. You could take burnt sienna and Viridian green and go back in here and add a little bit more, right? Texture to your trees. You can make this whole thing a palette knife painting or you could just decide, I just want my grass to be a palette knife painting. You could go in and Try this technique, let's see, let's try a little bit of sort of yellowy white. Let's see what happens here when I do that. That might, whoop, <laughs> not too thick. That might create just that kind of textured white light that you want to have on your farmhouse, or maybe not. Maybe you wanna go back in with a brush, I do, <laughs> for that, to fix this particular area, a little pointed brush. Maybe you want a combination. Oh, dang, that looks pretty good. <laughs> I'm like looking at it here and being like, well, I don't know. And then I look at it on the camera and I'm like, that looks amazing. Who did that? That brilliant.
I'm taking my little pointed brush and adding a little burnt sienna, a few grass, it's sort of darker grasses. Not coming down all the way, but a little bit of those, like those kind of tops that are going. Dang, that looks pretty damn good, actually. Well, go figure. When I'm painting out in the field, and when we get back to doing um, like in-person classes, maybe maybe Jessica Pryor and I will lead a, a painting class out in Central Park or something. So at, at, or wherever, like you know, we can you guys if you're here, you can come and meet, and we can do that uh, sometime. Uh, you use like all these different things. You could also use a piece of cardboard. Here, let me go show you what I mean by that. I need to get a piece of cardboard. So I don't know if you can see this, all cardboard has these funky whoops, here we go, funky textures right here. So I could actually dip just a little bit like I got the palette knife and I could do a little bit of that. Look at that. The cardboard creates some really awesome textures. So I encourage you to sort of find and sort of combine all together they create this feeling of, you know, varied grasses in the field without you having to paint every grass bit. Ooh, I like that. So you could use a little bit of cardboard too, or a leaf. Um, so, sorry, my internet is being really bad. So, okay. It's very, it's very yeah, good yeah. For me, but um, so for the grasses, uh, did you use like a little bit of white? Or yeah, I used burnt, I used uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and a touch of white. Okay. And then I mixed in a little bit of this purple in as well, which seemed to really enrich the color also. Here, I'll take a picture of where it is right now. And I know it's still hard to see, so. Here we go. Uh, this is looking a little bit oranger than in reality, but it's pretty close. Yeah, I think my fields need a little help now. Well, send me a picture. Yeah, so this feels too, did you put in the purple? Is this your purple here? Yeah. So number one, I think you used to, you didn't use enough yellow. So your, uh, your grasses are a little bit too strong, but more importantly, notice that like this doesn't, this looks like a hole, right? These look like holes. So this needs to be a little, your grass needs to be a little bit lighter and your flowers need to blend in kind of, they don't need to be separate from the grass. They're lying on top of and kind of blending over the edges of the grass. Do you understand what I mean by that? By flowers, do you mean like- That purple field of flowers there that you've like put like two little ponds. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's not what's happening. The flowers are, so you see parts of the green. So your green needs to be lighter. So I would lay a lighter green with more yellow and red in on top of it. And then you need to lay your purple. It's not like a separate thing, like um, here, let me show you here. It's not like what you've got is this. You've thought, you're thinking of these things as too separated here. Hold on, I'll show you what you've got going on here. You've got, whoops, that's too dark. So you've got this, and then for your greens, everything's drying, I can't like, you know, you've got this, it's like they're stopping here, right? 
where the flowers are. But that's not what's really happening. What's really happening is the green is kind of blending in. You can see bits of green through the flowers. So you want to bring your greens up in and blend your flowers over without, right? Letting some little bits come up into your green. You see the difference? Yeah, I think so. So I should like take a palette in terms of like the actual execution of this. Like I should yeah. take a palette knife with the green and pull it down into the- Yes. And then not fully, but like, you know, in, in strong areas, you can leave okay. little bits, but yes. And then you're going to put your purples on top, right? Like that. Try it. It's still, you know, the left brain still wants to separate things in the wrong way, right? It wants to think of things as separate, but these are, when we're painting grass, the thing that's intimidating about grass is there's a lot of different colors and a lot of different variations. And we handle that by, um, by uh, creating these sort of soft, loose strokes that little, little bits of your underpainting come through. Uh, there's soft edges between transitions from a field of grass to a field of flowers, right? We, we handled that with all these soft, that's why soft edges are so important. And don't worry about asking these questions. You're working, you're hearing some of it. It's not making sense. Some of it makes sense. It makes more sense when you're in the middle of doing it, right? So you're doing, you guys are doing great. Janet's probably doing something very similar with the dog she's working on. I'm imagining. You're working with fur texture. It's very similar to grass texture. By the way, guys, I was thinking, for those of you who take beginning drawing, I was thinking that we might actually do fabric and drapery in beginning drawing on Saturday. Would anybody be interested in learning to do that? Drapery and fabric? Yeah. yeah. Okay, excellent. I I'm working with a couple of uh, some teenage kids after you as part of a fundraiser, and that's what they asked for. And I was like, I bet beginning drawing would like that too. So <laughs> I think we're going to try it.
Uh, so Tashween, just keep blending in lighter colors. This is looking good. Just um, work on a little bit of a stronger blend, blend um, stronger light colors kind of coming down a little bit lower, right? So lighten your green a little bit. I think it's actually gonna turn out to be really beautiful. I like it. Oh, <laughs> you know, in some ways, Janet, I want you to stop right here. <laughs> He's flowing. I'm liking her. Uh, she's flowing, sweet old girl. This is a dead doggy, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. But in some ways, it's just perfect right now. And when you send this to whoever you're doing this for, please save this version to send to them yeah, as well. Yeah, I can save these versions along the way. Yeah. Oh, my God. Your drawing skills are going through the roof. This one was really hard. I had to um, grid like four times. Yeah. Well, I can see the work you've done with the drawing because so she's um, like she's kind of pudgy in weird ways. And so I had a really hard time placing the eyes. Yep, the hard to get the eyes in and the nose. The nose, you got the nose. It's easy to make the nose either too long. I think people mostly put make the nose too long. They put it, you know, down too far. Um, oh my god, it's great. Uh, is she paying you for this or are you just doing this? She paid the gift? church not enough, <laughs> but but it's a so I'm donating the, this as your right. Oh, that's right. This is one of the people who, right, gotcha. This is the church services auction. I only sold one this year. Really? That's all I put in. I, because oh, you only I, sold one because you don't have time. I was going to say. I, yeah, and I feel like it dilutes the price if you do two. That's true. Also, um, what? I, how is your how is your drawing class coming along? Uh, I have to do part two next Saturday. Excellent. And I'm going to grid. I, I'm going to pick one of those. Like, which one do you think I should do? Which one? Like the no. puffin or like what puffin, the puffin, the puffin yeah, is definite because the contrast is so good and you don't need any experience to do. I just did the puffin this morning for a group of uh, of of high school students out in Massachusetts. Um, I'm doing a lot of different like weird group stuff right now that I don't normally do, um, and they really loved it because yeah. the contrast is good and because you can really focus on the outer shapes. But we did the puffin in one of our BuzzFeed classes, if I remember correctly. People, we did a puffin and then we did a giraffe. <laughs> and make sure you turn it upside down for them. Don't give them an option on that. Tell them they have to work upside down. So some people are going to tell you they don't like it. And your answer to them is, why don't you like it? And they'll say they don't know what it is that they're drawing. And you will say, good. <laughs> not a, there's a really anal lady in this class. And mm -hmm. she was so unhinged by the fact that we drew blocky shapes for the lily yeah. first. Yeah. And then like we... And so then at the end, and she was just complaining through the whole class. And so then at the end, I went in and I just did like little tiny tweaks to curve it. To curve it. And I said, do you see how little it takes to go from the blocky shape to the curve shape? And I said, do you think you would have gotten it this precise if you had done it your way? And she said, no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I have had people. <laughs> lock themselves in a bathroom and scream and cry during this. <laughs> like, and I'm not talking about kids. <laughs> I'm talking about adults. <laughs> one was my postal carrier. My postal, I think postal carrying is one of those jobs where you have to be really controlling. So you really want to understand your process, right? From she was brilliant. And uh, ah, there's there's Tashween. Yay, you're back. Um 
I was just saying, Tashween, that we were talking about like uh, Janet is uh, branching out and starting to teach uh, drawing. And uh, so I was just, we were just talking about like what students do. Um, and I was saying, I was once teaching a class, it was in person. Uh, it was at a little shop where I sell a lot of work, salty teacup. And this woman actually went into the bathroom in the middle of the class <laughs> and locked the door and cried and screamed for like 20 minutes. Then came back out, brushed her hair, it just kept going and did a great drawing at the end of it and was like, that was so fun, you know? And I looked at her like, I'm completely traumatized, right? Like I've totally made somebody cry. An adult is crying and I don't know what to do about it. But um, for some people, this is a really like, like, you know, some people struggle with discomfort kind of hang, I guess that's the best way to put it. <laughs> Not knowing what the end process is. And uh, it's, uh, it's fascinating to me where where what people do. How different people deal with different things. Anyway, she did a great at the end, she kind of forgot that she did that. Like she, she was like, this was the best class ever. I want to do it again. And I was like, no, <laughs> never, please. <laughs> oh, Emma, that looks great. Wonderful. So now, Emma, you want to mix, uh, you could go even with lighter green on top of your, uh, even a lighter green on top of your, but see how much that looks like a blit. That looks beautiful. I love it. You see how much that looks like grass? Yeah. It really is great. So if you want to, you can add some of these golden here. Hold on, let me show you the picture. Some of these golden layers in, right? Or you can just keep it the way it is and start working a little bit more detail in your back areas. Let me take a picture of this so you guys have the sort of texture changes that happen and send this over to you. What Hold would you, on. what like mix would you use for the golden stuff in the front? Uh, the same that was back here. Okay. Yeah. Same as back here. And use all the different things. You can use like cardboard, a piece of cardboard. You can use your palette knife. You can use a little bit of a brush. You can use that single brush bristle technique. You can go lock yourself in the bathroom and cry for 20 minutes. I don't know why I can't do it, but here, hold on. I'll take a picture of this. Yeah, it was, it's emotionally, uh, people are very emotionally I think there's a lot of stress around, God dang it, here, hold on. I think there's a lot of stress around, um, I think everybody has a desire to draw in paint because I think it's like learning to read. I think it's something that everybody, like if you think about your life without reading, you'd be a very different person, right? It would be a very different life. You'd be frustrated all the time You'd be trying, you know, you'd be really sort of limited in how you navigated the world. You'd be a Trumper. You'd be a Trump, right. <laughs> George, yeah. Yeah, but you know, like, like imagine your life without reading. Learning to read opens a whole set of brain processes and analysis that extends far beyond the act of reading. It's like taking information. There's all kinds of things that happen. I think drawing and painting are the same way. And our brain craves it. Our brain wants to learn how to do it because it knows it has these capacities. It triggers a whole set of processes in the brain that don't get triggered anywhere else. They don't, you know, they don't start up like in, they don't ignite in any other way. So people are pretty emotional about it because I think everybody wants to do it and everybody should. So there, <laughs> end of conversation. <laughs> so some people want to do it so bad and think they can't do it and are so emotionally loaded with trying to understand a process that's different than how they're used to thinking that it sends them over the edge. But only briefly. Therapist standing by. This is why we call this art therapy. <laughs> Jean's, Jean's nodding and laughing. <laughs> um. 
Uh, I'm sorry to keep asking for color mixes, but my brain oh, is please. Fried, and like, I can't remember anything one moment to the next. Um, Don't worry. What was, so it was burnt sienna for like the gold. It was burnt sienna. It was burnt sienna, your yellow deep, and mm -hmm. then um, a touch of white. Okay. And maybe a touch of cadmium yellow, light or medium you know, some like light catches. And then if you're feeling really adventurous, mix in a little bit of your purple in with it too. Oh, very nice, Jean. All right, so, oh, I like the pink sky. And I like how fast you've gone. So I feel like I'd like to see, I'd like to see, Jean, you bring this light down a little bit farther because right now the light seems to be sitting on its own. It's not really integrated with what's happening. So I would say uh, bring in some of your lights and then um, more like sort of bright green in here, right? Like I think that will help yeah, I haven't done any of the yellow green yet. Oh, okay, great. That's what it is. It looks I just great. wanted to show you where I was at. I freaking love the sky. It's like gorgeous. I love the trees. And yeah. notice, I have, did a, very, you, very, a very, very pale lavender over the red, and that's what makes it look pink. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. You're, this is this is all pastel landscapes. That's what's giving you that <laughs> color combination, isn't it? Just crazy. These are beautiful, Jean. It's really beautiful. And have you really done anything to this yet? Or is it just sitting here while you're working around it? Um, I've done a little bit, but not much. Not just much. Kind of I can see it. I can see. And look at what happens as you kind of work around it, how it's starting to like pop out. It's, you know what I mean? Like it's starting to pop out itself. What I'm really seeing is these are all kind of muted medium tones. This is the light. This is the dark, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's showcasing this so nicely. Oh my God, I was just thinking about how much fun it would be to teach a, um, a landscape, a, a out a plein air painting class with Jessica in Central Park. Wouldn't that be fun? Would you guys come? Yeah. I'd be yeah. Yeah, I think that would be really fun. I promise you, as soon as we can travel again, that is on the schedule. Janet's like, I don't want to lug my stuff anymore. Oh my God. It's hard to imagine the life that you did, Janet, of like, I just tried to follow Janet around a couple of years ago as she went from like Reuters to the New York, the art, the art students league and like back to her home in New Jersey. And I, I lost like five pounds of just like <laughs> dragging stuff. And the heel of my shoe, I think. <laughs> it was amazing. I'm like, oh my God, this woman is indefatigable. Yeah, it's kind of hard not to, you know, it's, it's kind of easy to not want to go back to that. And are you going to be able to stay? You guys are all going to be able to. Is, does everybody going to stay uh, not going to the office? I don't know. Or is it just oh, different? Yeah, Tosh, has, has BuzzFeed said anything about plans to return, like with vaccinations and stuff? Not that I know. <laughs> I think the last thing was till August, end of August. End of August. That was something that was said like last year, last August. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I feel like they just kind of, they said that, but then like things changed, but they just like stopped right. that. Fruitless. Well, my question is, are you guys going to be able to uh, choose whether you stay at home or go to the office? Are they gonna require you? We have a very strong union that both Tashreen and I are on the bargaining committee of. Mm -hmm. and if we have anything to say about it. <laughs> People should have a choice. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, why, I mean, why the hell not? Like who, like obviously everybody can do their job from home. Yeah. So you should have a choice. I've always thought that. I've thought this could revolutionize the workplace really, right? If you could have a choice. I mean, not everybody can, but if you are in a position 
Good. Good for you. All the power to the union. You and uh, Reuters are all in the same union, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling the NBC lady, now we all have to be, now nobody talks shop because we have like actually different news organizations working in the same class. <laughs> so it's just an incentive to talk art and other things so Andy, rather than work. Is Andy racing this one, Leah? Is what? Is Andy helping you? Andy, Andy greased this one. Andy sent an email to HR yesterday and she was like all over it. I mean, I just, he just introduced it yesterday. Yeah. Great. Yes. Yes. He is proving his uh, worth. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm really stoked. She was really excited. And uh, it's just kind of a, and also seemed very clear on how difficult it is to corral people into doing it. You know what I mean? So she was mm -hmm. thinking very strategically about how do we get people to do this? And so we were talking about onboarding. So essentially we're gonna have one class in two weeks at a New York time. And then from then they're probably gonna book five classes as onboarding and we might do them at different times, right? Same class at different times to try and get different people um, with people joining for joining in the regular, joining in with you guys in June. So yeah, I was really excited. I think it's gonna, I think they're gonna be a great addition. I think the ongoing challenge is how to offer things for people that can kind of be continuing to work. Well, you know, you look at your schedule now and it's like, there's no excuse anymore to not do it. Cause like, right. <laughs> you've got everything covered. It's like, okay, you can't do it on a weeknight cause you're too tired. Okay, right. well, now do it on the weekend. On the weekend. <laughs> right. And abstract painting is gonna start, I think in June too. I'm totally stoked about that. My friend, Carista Trask, who's an awesome, abstract art you met her janet during yeah. open studios krista's going to teach it and it's so, such a different process than what we're doing here that there's no way i could even begin to do it because i it's just so different um i think it's going to be amazing um yeah i think it's going to be really amazing let's see Oh uh, yeah, Emma, nice. That's a good beginning. Be careful not to get, it's kind of looking, I would um, vary your textures. So look here, what's happening here. And you'll see there's lighter and darkers. And I can still see green grass through most of this grasses in the front. So be careful not to block out. You might wanna drag in your green here a little bit more. If you look at this, it's a much more, these are almost similar values. If we, I have the, here, let me look at the black and white just to show you what I mean. Um, look at the black and white version of this. There is virtually no difference between what's happening here, here, and here. Can you see that? Yeah. They're very light shifts. So you've got these very dark dramatic shifts so I would say bring everything up to more mid-tone levels so that this doesn't look as so light against this. Look at that. Yeah, the, the, mid, the, the values are pretty subtle. So don't be afraid to go too light. <laughs> okay. Tashween. So Tashween, it's coming along. It's just um, everything's, so I'll tell you the same thing. Look at this. Look at the black and white. There's virtually no, so you need to get lighter with your darks. 
it's not so much of a dark, these are very similar in value, even though this is kind of an orange and this is kind of a yellow. So get lighter. And then your purple is way too dark. Your purple needs to have, so basically you need, everything needs to be mixed with more yellow or more white, right? To bring it in. And I think, and it'll look great on top of what you've got there. So that's like, what's really awesome. So you haven't wrecked it. It, yours has a kind of stormy sea quality to it right now. <laughs> you can let it dry. Maybe I've been struggling with the amount of paint on there. Right. The back looks great. So it's just this kind of like getting, you know, blending in more on top and on the bottom, right? Less just sort of blocks of colors. It's a, t it's a touchy business. God, Emma, that's just looking great. It looks like an Andrew Wyatt painting. Thank you. Don't you think? I like it. I, yeah, I'm, I didn't know I could. Do yes, that's what I like to hear. I didn't know I could do this. <laughs> um, so in terms of like pulling more green, you know, evening out the levels. Values. Values, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like, do you think I should just pull like green from the center back as well, like into the- Yeah. Green? Yeah, yeah, little bits, but also just know that like you're going to lighten your darks more, right? Mm -hmm. So it's more about lightening your darks, but yes, you're going to blend up and down. Yep, up and down. Excellent. And you've got like 25 minutes left, so... Y'all got plenty of time to get something done here. And it's also really okay to be like, at some point, oh my God, my painting looks terrible. Leah, would you mind setting the black and white? Just a picture of the one that you have. Sure, absolutely. Let me just do that really quick. Here, hold on, I'm taking a picture of this. Okay. Uh, I will probably clear out the chat, by the way, of all of this stuff, just because it tends to fill up the phone really fast. Here we go. There you go. Has anybody gone in to see any of the new edited uh, videos with pictures? Uh, Tashween, are they helpful 
to have the pictures edited in? I might not have done, I might have been in the class for this, so I can't do mm. that. Okay, let's see. You're welcome. I want to glaze my I'm actually glazing my barn blue so I feel like I'm losing as I try to add the lights on top with little tiny brushes. I'm losing some of the variation that I'm wanting. That's better actually. Leah, what do you think sold um, NBC on it? Uh, the the health and wellness trying trying to offer things that people can do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think kind of an ongoing task of like what people can do. Also, she seemed really excited by the creative aspects of it. She's mm -hmm. like, you know, we are at, at heart a creative organization, and so there's lots yeah. of people that are in on that. Um, yeah, but I think also the HR person really wanted to do it. You know, she's like a Gene or a, or a Gina or a you. Oh. She really wants to do it. So like <laughs> she's like, but also, yeah, I just think like it's, she saw it kind of hit all the, she said it felt, it, she kept saying it was very unique. So she felt like there were, wasn't anything quite like this um, in the other offerings that they had seen. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but. I think that's definitely the case. I think those are the things she said. What if it happened with CNN? Uh, CNN never went anywhere. Nobody ever, your friend, that was your friend, right? Yeah, she's, she was an intern for me at one point. Yeah, yeah, she just never took it any further. She's not high, she's not, she doesn't have any power. Right. Well, and you know, Andy, I think Andy really waited until the right moment. Like they laid a bunch of people off last year. So he did not try to introduce that last year. That was like mm -hmm. a tough year, but now like they're fairly stable and this is the moment they're trying to kind of boost morale. So I mm -hmm. think he just picked the supreme moment 
sent a little email saying something about how much he it was good for him and how much he loved it and how it was part of this bigger program that you had started uh, at, at Reuters, uh, you, meaning you, Janet. And um, uh, and they just, re and she, and also I just think she's really smart. I think she's good at her job. I think she recognizes mm -hmm. like something that will be good for employees. Um, their their employees so yeah it's really nice it's fun Great. i get very excited about this i think it's nice to bring in you know new people it's been so much fun to have buzzfeed come in tashween and, and emma it's just been so great to have you guys and all your buddies in and it's been great to have the rest of the tr family come in they've there's been so much gene we're going to get your people in too i know it Let's see. Oh, Emma, <laughs> how fun. How fun. It not looks real. great. So, yeah, and I would say, I love the way the front is looking. So now I'd say you might want to add a little bit of that similar variation in the back tree line. Yeah, right? that's what I had to do actually. Yeah, not as dramatic, it'll be darker right but you could add some lights in what you really want to do is work around the farmhouse mm -hmm. so the other thing you'll want to do is look at the farmhouse and kind of work the edges around the farmhouse to make sure the farmhouse isn't really floating right it's it's firmly anchored so look at the edges what's happening to the edges where um that's in the photo right what's happening where the farmhouse meets the edges mm -hmm. of what's around it to help push that it's great how fun So you've got about 15 minutes left in class. This is a good moment to step back and look at what can I get done in this time? What's gonna be the most bang for the buck? It is often reviewing edges. And when I mean edges, I mean, what's happening here where this tree line is meeting this back edge? What's happening within the tree line? What's happening where the tree line meets the barn? what's happening, right? So we're going to edges where one edge meets another and we're looking to see what little tweaks can I make that will, that will, uh, you can do a lot of that in 15 minutes. Be right back.
Sorry, phone fell. Where is it? Here it is. Come on, Boo. Come up and say hi. Come on. Come on up and say hi. Here's Herbie's. Let us say hello. He's massive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there he is. Oh, he is getting to be such a big kitty. Mm, I know. He's a good boy. He's been outside in his little catio. I just learned that Portland has a yearly catio tour, citywide tour of, <laughs> of catios around the city. It's a lot like Portland Open Studios. They, they issue a map. You go around and you look at like, I don't know, 30 or 40 different catios in different neighborhoods. And I'm like obsessed. Right now. Last year they did their catio show. Uh but on um last year they did their catio show, but online. <laughs> Go find all these catios. But that is a very Portland ethos. That is such a Portland thing. It's such a Portland thing. Portland really doesn't care about the art museum. Portland cares about like, Portland is a quirky maker place. Portland cares about like going and seeing what people are making in their backyards. That is really a Portland thing. It's kind of nice, I don't mind it. Um, it's different. It's a very different like sort of ethos than, than other cities around. Let's see. Oh, nice Jean, nice. So once again, just work on the blending of those uh, elements. They're still looking a little too separate. Right, right. So, but much better, much brighter. Well, very nice, beautiful. So I would take your palette knife and drag down and drag up, drag mm -hmm. down, up, drown up at each of those edges. Come here. Oh, 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 nope. Don't do that. Come here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> he's just, he's huge. I finally got him to wear a. I have to decide on my background color for this guy. Let's see. Are your cats all as competitive with the computer screen as mine are? He yeah, completely they're... jumped up and knocked that over. They they are completely competitive over who gets to sit under my desk lamp because it's warm <laughs> and and who gets to be closest to me. They fight over that. My cat is like, well, I think it's more to get my attention when she's hungry, she'll just like 
put herself directly on my keyboard, directly in front of whatever I'm looking at. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> What was the um the color mix for the gray of the barn? It was you could play around with that. You could just basically play with mixing complementary color pairings. So you mm -hmm. could try like blue and orange and white, or you could try purple and yellow and white, or you could try green and red and white, see which ones you like. I think blue and orange uh, turned out to be so uh, when I say blue and orange, I mean burnt uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna with white. Jean, what did you use? Is that what you use? I used primary blue and cadmium orange. And then and then I white to make it paler. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so you could try different things. Like Cuz it came out like a really, you know, cool muddy purple. Uh nice. Yeah, so that's the thing. Like all the grays are like there's so many different grays. I can, I'm gonna I'm not gonna make that joke again. <laughs> I made that joke too many times. Too many shades of gray jokes. But you know what I'm saying. Ooh, Janet, very nice. Oh, puppy, puppy. Janet, are you gonna glaze? I love the fact that you started with pink as a base. What caused you to do that? Pink and uh, purple. That's just, what I, that's just what I see. He's very cool. She is very cool on the left and very warm. The fur is very warm on the right. So I wanted that pink to be on the yes. warm side and that purple on the cool side. On the cool side. And then she's going to look amazing when you get the war the sort of brown tones over the top. It's going to yeah. be beautiful. It's oh, already wow. wonderful. Yeah. How yeah. great. Can you, do you have the first uh, underpainting? Do you happen uh, to have it? I think so. Let me Can you it. send it? I'd love people to take a look at this to see how you, how you're working, what you chose to do for your underpainting. <laughs> so good. It's very Andy Warhol. Well, that was my idea when I started these. Mm -hmm. It has that, well, you've succeeded then. If I'm pulling that out, then you've, you've really succeeded. Good job. Here's my underpainting. Huh. Let's see. Oh yeah, can you guys see that? Look at the base. And look at how, so if you look at the base of this painting that Janet's done, and then if you look up to see how she's layering her browns and her, or, you know, her fur colors on top of that purple, pink uh, base, that's just great. It's awesome. I love it, Janet. It's love really it. great. It's a really thank great. You. Thank you for sending the send, thank you for sending the first one. It's funny you see a dog like this and it's like I was like oh this is going to be a boring one. <laughs> but uh, there's so much going on. There's a lot going on. There's a lot more than you realize and it's actually like more complicated to paint this dog than a dog that has a lot more variation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. And you've really captured all of it. You're, you're very attuned to the value changes now in a really good way. All right. All right, you guys, I'm going to need to pull this off, remove the spotlight. I'm going to look at you all. You can keep going. But go ahead and hold it up or show me. Let, let's see where your painting is at right now i can't hang her unfortunately i can't like stay too long this time because i've got another class going after this but oh yeah jim that <laughs> looks great emma that's looking awesome really great tashween hold your painting up gene hold your painting up see where they're at 
Oh, those are great. Oh, nice. oh my God. Oh, Tosh, we nice save. You're, That's really you're, pretty. You've got it. You've got it. You guys have That's got great. it. Just keep working. And if you feel like it, come to Sunday's class and work in Sunday. You can keep working on this one. You can work on your cow. You can work on, on this guy. This is what we'll be doing. You know, you can work on others. Come to Sunday's class. Do it. Make it a little Easter gift for yourself. <laughs> All right. Oops. And I lost somehow. I lost my video. How did that happen? Let's see. All right, you guys. Uh, great. How is that going? There we go. What? Okay. What's happening? <laughs> Help me. Great work today. Uh, keep going and just look for more and more and more options. We'll see you later. Bye. Take care, guys. Great work today.